Today is day 12 of creating a 3D printing startup business. Well, hello and welcome back guys. Today is day 12 of turning my garage into a 3D printing startup business. Let's jump behind us and see what has changed since yesterday. So we have had quite a few prints go ahead and complete and we have a few still running. And then the one that was going to take the longest, of course, gave me the spaghetti of doom again. But I'm not real concerned with that one. I'm not going to try to do it again right now just for time's sake. Uh, I want everything else to finish up, print out, uh, and then that way we can go over everything. So today I think will be an exciting one. What I plan on doing is actually getting outside of the garage uh, for a little bit and I'm going to go to some of the retailers to see if I can find some comparable items to what I am printing behind me. Uh, I'm not going to find everything that's an exact match, but I'm going to get close enough and I want to do some market research. You know, I want to see what's in stores, what the styles are, colors, packaging, uh, price points, and I want to purchase a couple of those, bring them back to the garage, and I want to set them up side by side so that we can compare what I'm able to print and what's already being sold in stores. So without any further ado, let's get on the road. Well guys, I think this was a pretty successful trip. I did brave 
the Christmas shopping season on a Saturday to do this. So it probably wasn't the best uh, planning on my end, but nonetheless, we got it done. So as you guys saw in the short clips leading up to this, we went to Home Goods, Target, and Walmart. Now, what I explicitly wanted to do when I was at those stores was find the absolute closest comparison to items that I have been printing. I feel that was pretty successful. And when we were gone, our prints were still running. Uh, there's a couple that aren't ready yet, uh, but the majority of them are. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get these items unbagged onto the table, and then I'm gonna get the prints that are already finished off of the shelf, off of the plates, and onto the table as well. And we'll take a closer look at a side-by-side -side comparison of what we've printed on this farm versus what we could go to the store right now and buy. So we do have a soap hand pump uh, it's about halfway through. It's got another two hours and 37 minutes left. This is still cranking away. This is a candle holder. This only has about 30 minutes left. These have finished. I'll get these on the table and explain those. This was finished when we were gone as well. And a couple more items. This one is finished. We have two more up here. And then this one is still cranking out. But it's looking good. I had someone requesting an update on the air scrubber. I don't have too many printers running right now, so I have the scrubber on the second setting. Uh, when it was a lot more running just the other day, I had it up on the fourth setting, and it seemed to do well. The positioning of this meter here seems to be doing well as well. I had it drop to reading a fair condition one time when everything was running. Uh, but then when I turned on the air scrubber and got all the air circulating, it dropped back to good. And you can tell the levels are really where you want to be at. Uh, it could always be better, but uh, for me, I, I think this is a, a good average to maintain as far as the most I would want to be in. But they seem to be working great and uh, no issues. The dehumidifier has been doing its job. We are at 45% right now which is great. All right, guys. So we got everything laid out. Uh, we have the store-bought items. We have the items that came right off of the 3D printer, and they are essentially next to each other. So what I wanted to accomplish with this trip today was to actually go inside these brick and mortar stores, see what we printed off and how comparable uh, those items are to what I can go inside the store today, pick up, touch, purchase, and leave. The materials I kept uh, all the same. So we're looking at, you know, a plastic type material uh, compared to our PLA filament printed items. What you see as far as some of these items, 
the generic category I would say overwhelmingly is home goods, right? Is what you would call your, your home classification. So this isn't even what I was gonna be targeting. Uh, but again, 11 days ago, I started by saying I need to get this farm set up. I started video recording it to bring you guys along with me. And I said, how do I explain, you know, if no one ever knew what a 3D printer was, how do I explain what the capabilities of this type of uh, technology is? And I said, you know, let me go online, let me get some files, print them out, and compare them to real world items that I can go and buy today if I wanted to. Uh, that's where I think that this type of explanation starts to really make sense. So what I'm gonna do now is get some of these items off to the side. I'll get some comparables right in front of us and we'll go ahead and take a look at them. Okay guys, now the first items in front of me, I'm gonna call catch-alls, right? They're basically just little dishes that you place around the house on the entry table at your front door and when you walk in you throw stuff in them they're meant to catch items that you don't want to bring with you into the house or you want to keep in a central location right we all have them probably or we know what they are now these were purchased from walmart and these were printed with a 3d printer i searched home goods i searched target uh, i couldn't find any real designated uh, catch-alls uh, that really look like that's what their intended use was for other than walmart and the only thing walmart had looks like a coffee filter i literally when i was going to pick it up i'm like is this a coffee filter um, but no it is just a little hand dish this is definitely a plastic material and you know i'm gonna say honestly who wore it better you know which one would you want in your house you know now this isn't terrible i mean it's not what i would first lean towards um and this you could definitely play around with the colors uh, things of that nature but this would be a two-piece set now these were twelve dollars a piece to purchase uh, these i will break down uh, tomorrow every single thing that i show today we're going to deep dive and i'm going to say this is what it costs to print but what would that look like getting to a customer after everything is said and done let's account for shipping fees on different types of platforms taxes everything and see what the raw cost breakdown would be uh, that's my my goal so the first one is catch plates okay and the next one we have a bathroom organizing set we have your typical soap pump you have just another storage container uh, this one is typically for your toothbrushes and then you have a tray to contain everything. This is a plastic resin type material. Now, this whole set retails, what I paid for it today, was $48 with tax. This is something that is comparable that I printed today. We have a toothbrush holder. We have a storage container and we have a soap dish now to make it a true comparison i do have a soap container behind me printing that's finishing up but essentially all together i'm looking at around five dollars uh, at most for printing this so retail we have this at 48 all in, I'm around $5, including the soap. This is a six pack of plastic gingerbread mini ornaments. What we have here is a handful, more than six, of white plastic snowflake ornaments.
I bought some of these ornament hooks, which of course gets added to the price. Uh, I will say that these come with little yarn string, uh, which can be an option for any type of ornament as well. Uh, this pack was this pack was 97 cents for 100. So we're we're looking at about a penny each. So these would get hooked, you get turned, you can adjust this, and now you have your own little mini ornament. Now these ornaments all together cost me about 30 cents to produce. These ornaments cost me $3.66 pre-tax. So we're looking just under $4 uh, to purchase these outright so we have four dollars to purchase and we have around 20 30 cents to produce so there is some type of margin there now people are going to say yeah it's going to be eaten up by shipping and shipping is a, a very big part of getting products to people i will say that the difference is between a brick and mortar and an online platform a lot of times what people are going to do is they're going to take the listing price of a product and they're going to bake in the cost of shipping. So I actually pulled it up on the phone and it says that shipping is unavailable. Uh, so currently you can't purchase these and have them delivered to you. So what I would say is that there is a need in the market, right? If you have your heart set on mini gingerbread ornaments and you can't get them uh, but I am selling them guess what that is a potential sale so I, I'm doing all of this in the micro to try to show the macro right to show the true scale and potential now this isn't a get rich quick uh, thing uh, any type of business that is viable and that lasts uh, does take a considerable amount of effort, time, thought, and execution. Well guys, I think today was another success. We got boots on the ground, we got out there, really took a look at what is available today, uh, what we can produce. And again, these aren't the items that I plan on selling, and this isn't my primary business model. Uh, but I saw that this could really, I hope, emphasize and help show to someone who, who doesn't know anything about this what the capabilities of this type of technology truly is. Um, it's remarkable. Uh, the opportunities are endless and the ways to really make this a viable business are boundless. So with that, I appreciate you guys coming along. Today is day 12 of a 21 day series of getting this print farm set up and operationable. Uh, we do have some back end coming up that we have to get together. And I do want to, again, as showing uh, proof of concept, take one of these everyday household items that we have identified as having a potential upside, take that and bring it to market and what that looks like. So if this is something that you're into, make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any notifications and that you can continue the journey with us as we turn this garage into a 3D printing startup business. I'll see you guys tomorrow.